Hey everybody, Ernie Hatmaker here, and I'm in the garden trying my best to get out as much as I can that I've started in the little greenhouse totes that I showed you. For those of you who don't really know who I am or what I'm doing in this space, I'm basically turning what was a soybean field, well, soybeans in the summer and wheat field in the winter, about one and a half acres of it is, is garden, and I'm trying to turn it into something I can use permanently as garden, and it's taken a little while to build the soil up from what it was. So I wanna show you what I've been doing this week. So I started out with 10 of these totes that I moved my seed starts from grow lights into. Some of them never were under grow lights, and they were directly out here in the winter and everything and um, I'm down to um, like six or seven of them the only thing I'm probably going to leave out here in totes maybe not through the whole summer because I know they're gonna bolt before the end but this cilantro it grew over the winter and it's been in this tote the whole time it's in dirt not in uh, the solo cups like I have the other stuff so it's going to be here until I harvest it. And I'm probably going to do that soon because I don't see any flowers yet. And I really do need to, to get some of this and get it dried. I use a dehydrator when I dry my herbs. Something that's been really funny is the only thing in my milk jug garden when I did winter sowing to survive was this kale plant. That's it. And I'm really surprised it survived. But I'm going to probably just cut this uh, top off and just let it grow. Because, I mean, it beat the odds. This is winter density lettuce. It's a little different than the green leaf lettuce I showed you. In here, I have marigold zinnias. Uh, the, the nasturtium haven't come up yet, but they will. And I'm just mixing up my scents and smells, hoping that uh, they fool a lot of the, the insects that are going to try to snack on my stuff. I want to stay as organic as I possibly can. Probably not full organic. It's probably just going to be more natural than organic because I'm going to use stuff like BT. But anyway, yeah, I'm not sure about some of my soil, whether or not it had chemical fertilizers or something like that. And I do use some chemical fertilizer, so I can't really call it organic. That's kind of what I'm trying to do. Oh, look, some of my nasturtium came up. Look at that. Yay. This is the dwarf cherry rose nasturtium that's in here, along with marigolds, and those are different types of marigolds. And then I have some tomatoes that are learning to be dry so that I can put them out with the other tomatoes. In these containers, the humidity is really high, and so the tomatoes that I put directly out from here, even though they're used to the sun, they don't get sun scald. They usually go into shock because they dry out. The brassicas and onions that are in this bed stay a little dry and they're doing fine as far as that goes. But you can see there's a little bit, it looks like snail damage. The snails usually bite in holes. Uh, whereas like if you have worms or something like that, they go in a long line. So that's kind of how you can tell what you have eating your things. But yeah, this bed kind of stays dry and uh, except for, you know, the rain watering them this stuff is holding its own in here in the buckets that i have brassicas you can kind of see i've added a couple more various from kale to um, green leaf and more chard things like that and over here i've put more kale and uh, marigold and zinnia mixtures in grow bags to add to the the greens that are all along the ground i've added some of my peppers to the ground and some uh, are mixed with various different uh, smelling things in grow bags you can see the peppers versus the lettuces and uh, there's pepper in here that's a cool jalapeno and um, i've got some basil kind of throw off the smells around here i'm trying you guys this new technique of just mixing in all the scents it's not really new it's just new to me because usually i keep my things separate and here's some baby deal it's actually mammoth deal but it's a baby right now so he's doing really good for his first few hours he hasn't gone into shock like um, it's done on me in the past but i made sure i added it to wet soil this time 
I'm going to be mulching soon probably with straw over the roots, not roots, the stems of my golden acorn squash. I have a gigantic 50 gallon grow bag that I've got um, some Cherokee purple tomatoes, a couple of nasturtium, and uh, some sweet million, just different variety of tomatoes and a pepper or two in there. The peppers are the long cayenne, and I'm growing a lot of cayenne this year, so I'm mixing it all up. This 50 gallon is actually going to do just fine. I'm going to add dirt the taller they get until the grow bag is absolutely full. The biggest thing I'm happy with about this particular brand of grow bag is even though you can see that the fiber is not woven, they can still get their roots out into the ground underneath all of this. So I'm kind of happy about this kind versus the, the kind that uh, is woven. So anyway, I've got more 10 gallon grow bags with, um, this one's got nasturtium in it and hoping that it'll just climb and mix in with my various tomatoes. Some of my tomatoes I've thrown completely on the ground and I'm letting the roots build up a little bit. I bought these buckets. They're just regular, um, you know, food great for sure but um they are on like uh, most big box store aisles um, by the paint or whatever and basically with these i bought these spigots in a different place they're also food grade they were actually made for i think brewing beer but they were like 30 cents each and they come with their own washer but just for posterity I have made sure that Ed got some silicone around there so that they wouldn't leak. And they not only catch rain, but they keep the mosquitoes out thanks to this window netting. And I just kind of glued it. You can tell where the glue is. And this here screwed in to a hole that I dug and it just lets the water out down there. And that's how I get a little bit of extra water. Did a little digging. I didn't do the first amount of digging. I actually put my beans in here and then a turtle came in and laid some eggs. Did see the eggs. They're underneath there. I decided not to put anything that I've got to put fertilizer or something like that. That way I don't mess up whatever nature's got going on for this turtle and her babies down there. But my little marigold is still standing. And so instead of planting more down here, I've actually decided to go ahead and put stuff in buckets around this way. So I've got nasturtium and beans in these two buckets down here. Another uh, water catcher. This is what those on that side were supposed to look like. These beans are a various mixture of runner beans and Kentucky Wonder Pole beans and asparagus beans. And they're all kind of in there together. I planted some nasturtium seed. It hasn't come up yet. A couple of marigolds. They haven't come up yet. More grow bags with kale and Swiss chard. That chard is kind of twisted. It's not dead. It's just, it's twisted. I don't think the hard rain got to it. The strawberries that I planted, they are doing awesome. The ones that are in the bed with the mint aren't doing as well. I might move some of the ones that are in these grow bags out. The marigold, look at that, has started to bloom. Yay! I have another water spigot. This one I actually turned up so that it pours out like that. And that's so I can wash my hands if I need to. My carrots, look at that. These are long imperator carrots. And as the stems come up, I'm going to add more dirt. These dahlias are coming up. I don't know if you can that's a weed poking out there um but yeah the roots got exposed with the really hard rain we had but they're still coming out of there so yay look at these african daisies they are doing so good look at them they are beautiful i know if i don't uh, start cutting them back or building a bed around them and keeping them chopped down they're just gonna spread all over the place look <laughs> it's already began <laughs> there's another clump of them so I mean they're spreading out here amongst all the chickweed and whatnot I still haven't put out my summer beans yet but um, I know that there's probably no weeds growing here now 
I'm looking forward to seeing what they do. Um, I still also have weeds growing out this direction because I haven't decided what's going to go on this little fence line here. All right, so my 100 gallon potato grow bag, it's been watered. I've seen a little bit of growth in here, more growth sticking out. Um, pretty soon this thing's going to be filled up with straw. I'm just going to cover over the the potatoes as they start growing babies with straw so it'll be easier to dig them out. These that are in this bed along with the onions are doing really good when I'm going to lead them over to this wire here. And then this bed has a lot of um, Texas sweet onions. I wish I could have found some Vidalia but you know use what you have. These pots that have various things in them, uh, marigold, green leaf lettuce, some winter density lettuce along with my Cherokee purple and some kind of dahlia, I don't remember right now, a pompon dahlia I think are in there with the Cherokee purple and this Cherokee purple is in by itself. I don't really want to experiment but I do want to see if the different scents will throw off, you know, the, the hornworm moth. Look at that. Those zinnia aren't really happy in there, but hopefully um, I can get the thyme that's in there to kind of grow along with it. Maybe the zinnia wants to come. This is the repurposed soil bed, and most of the soil just looks so good in there. Um, and it's got the spinach that I planted that is now pretty much whatever's fully rooted is, is grown and the other stuff has died. <laughs> and then on this side, my swiss chard and my regular green chard have kind of taken over and i've got another one of those um, buckets that i've prepared these tomatoes um, some are german some are um, just various different types but they're indeterminate and so they're going to be growing on this greenhouse frame and inside here is just another um, tomato i think that's a uh, an indigo blue or whatever purple whatever it is nasturtium over here i love that variegated color i think it's alaska nasturtium but i'm not sure anyway um and then more uh various tomatoes that'll climb and hopefully we'll get them to fill this greenhouse this is the back side of peppermint forest you can see my lemon thyme is growing on the back side of that i thought it died it did not amongst all this dead grass is a bunch of mullein there's some catnip i just planted because i saw that some of the catnip that was over there where now i have lilies or day lilies the catnip gets kind of jumped um, if you've ever seen catnip seed you know it'll blow in the wind really easily just like mullein will so anyway um, amongst the comfrey and the mullein the money <laughs> i was gonna call it money i wish i was growing money man that's a lot i'd be rich i have regular time that's blooming over here though amongst all these um that i did not plant there's a comfrey growing up over there wow you see that comfrey that weird looking leaf amongst the weeds there there's sage um that's still growing from the sage that i planted three and a half years ago cannot believe this stuff is still alive you can't kill it <laughs> 